Fly Cross 2 was founded in 1963 by Molly Badham and Natalie Evans. Their current director is Sean Redrobe. He is a registered charity and they are members of the ARSA, IUCN, WARSA and the ARSA, funded by visitors. It is well known as a primate centre which is the only UK zoo to house all four grade apes. They also house around 500 other animals as well as most 100 different species including many endangered and native animals. It's why Crestu there are three classrooms in the study area which provide education from preschools to university students. This is about as a necessity of safe standards on one zoo practice and it highlights that suitable facilities equal to the size of the zoo should be available for educational purposes. The Zoo Committee Handbook states that zoos appeal to a wide cross-section of society and their educational mission should be to provide educational experiences for all visitors. In the annual review of Fly Cross Zoo 2013, it states that the Discovery Team taught 25,000 children. This is increased due to the development of new interactive teaching programmes and the opening of educational opportunities such as the Old Guide in the UK. Fly Cross Zoo also runs Fly Cross Explorers, which runs every Saturday, enabling young people to get behind the scenes and take part in different activities, including cleaning out animal paddocks, setting up an herb garden and creating enrichment. The Zoo Committee Handbook states that zoos are required to join the Zoo Education Network. The ARS's Education and Training Committee meets three times a year. Cyclist Zoo Education staff regularly attend these meetings to discuss methods of teaching and for evaluation. Education programmes include formal and informal programmes, presentations of enclosures and talks and interactions. Section 1A in the Zoo Licensing Act specifies the conservation measures that zoos are required to undertake. One of these is to promote public education and awareness in relation to the conservation of biodiversity, in particular providing information about the species of wild animals kept in the zoo and their natural habitat. Cyclist still meets this by holding various animal talks, such as the meerkat, elephant and bonobo cat feed, black-headed spider monkey feed and lemur feeding. Different events are held at the zoo for educational purposes and raising awareness. On Cyclist Zoo's website, it states that they work with EASA and other European zoos and organisations to reduce the planet's carbon footprint. They encourage people to think about how we are affecting the environment. Campaigns which they have run include the Pole to Pole campaign in our world. The Pole to Pole campaign aims to highlight the various species of animals that live on the North and South Poles and the threats they face. Other events include Elephant Celebrations, which was held in September last year, and Bonobo Bonanza, which ran in April, to highlight how special bonobos are and involve visitors creating giant banana enrichment for the bonobos. The Zoo Committee Handbook states that a modern zoo must contribute in as many ways as possible to the education of visitors. They can, for example, use graphics and other devices to provide information and raise awareness, for example, animal talks, interactive and written notice boards and displays. Notice boards contain different facts and statistics about the animals at the zoo or outside each enclosure for visitors to see. This is because in the Secretary of State standards on modern zoo practice, it says that accurate information about the species exhibited must be available. Generally, this should include as a minimum of the species name, both scientific and common, its natural habitat, some of its biological characteristics and details of its conservation status. Fly Cross Zoo has contributed to conservation projects for more than 26 countries and currently houses 47 species that are considered to be critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable on the IUCN Red List. The Zoo Committee Handbook highlights that zoos can participate in conservation activities of benefit to species in a number of ways. Activities such as this can happen in situ or ex situ, which may be undertaken in the UK or abroad and may be species or habitat focused. The Zoo's Committee Handbook also highlights that most zoos are able to support field in situ conservation overseas as well. The level of the support and involvement will vary with the size and type of collection. It may be in partnership with other zoos or organisations. Flycross Zoo Nature Reserve was created a few years ago and has continued to develop with the number of biodiversity actions and species, which is now at 16. This includes the European Hedgehog, Skylark and Northern Lapwing. The management of the reserve to create a patriotic habitat is proving a success.
They are part of an active captive breeding program which helps to maintain numbers in the wild. For example, in the Ape Action Africa Sanctuary based in Malfi National Park, Cameroon, Africa. The sanctuary houses approximately 320 primates, which include 21 gorillas, 110 chimpanzees, and a number of other small primate species. The zoo helps with the numerous running costs associated with the large sanctuary, as well as providing specialist veterinary care. The zoo committee handbook highlights that most field conservation projects involve partnerships between participating organisations, and zoos are in an ideal position for forming such liaisons. The zoo also actively support the Lelia Bonobo Sanctuary based out in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This is the world's only sanctuary for bonobos. The sanctuary specialises in the rehabilitation of organ bonobos, including individuals that have been taken from the bush sanctuary. The centre has two islands where rehabilitated bonobos are released into a natural habitat. The annual review of Tricosu 2013 states that six different conservation projects received over 24,000 plus veterinary and PR support throughout the Tricosu Conservation Welfare Fund in 2013. The zoo has also helped with acquiring uniforms for the Flora and Fauna International Salvit Gibbon Project based in Vietnam. The Secretary of State Modern Zoo Practice highlights research from which conservation benefits acquired for species of wild animals and or the exchange of information relating to the conservation of species of wild animals. This project conducts research and conservation work on the salvage gibbon, which is the second rarest gibbon species in the world. Tricosu funded the uniforms with two in the shoes, which also are embellished with the zoo logo. There are estimated to be about 35 ml letters left in the wild, which makes it one of the most endangered cat species in the world. Vets International are currently working in the Russian Far East to help conserve this species and reduce its habitat destruction and the constant poaching threat, whilst working to create a reintroduction programme for letters born in captivity to be released to the wild to undergo a strict policy of no human contact. The Zoo Committee handbook highlights that maintaining, restoring and providing habitat are all important in conservation. A health assessment is continuing to try and determine the disease risk of introducing a new species. They are also tagging leopard in the wild. In the Secretary of State Standards of Modern Zoo Practice, it states that one of the conservation measures is where appropriate, breeding of wild animals in captivity and or where appropriate, the repopulation of an area with or the reintroduction into the wild of wild animals. Tricosu has followed this by having an active breeding programme for the animal leopard. The zoo also participates in a number of European endangered species breeding programmes and in 2013 had success in the birth of the bonobo, gorilla, crowned lemur and the debrasa monkey, to name a few. During 2013, staff at Tricross also helped manage a number of breeding programmes, including those for the Siamangulin, Humboldt penguin and red-handed tamarin. The management of health and safety in zoos is an important factor in ensuring the health and safety of employees and other people involved in zoo activities. The management of health and safety in zoos act states that following health and safety is viewed as being cost effective as it preserves human resources. Risk assessments are required to be carried out to determine the risks that employers are exposed to. The management of health and safety at work regulations act 1999 enforces this so that risks to employees, volunteers and other groups of people are reduced to a safe level. Another regulation which requires an assessment of specific risks include the control of substances hazardous to health regulations 2002. Animals that try across to are a range of three categories of category 1 being dangerous and a non-contact policy should be operated, for example chimpanzees. Categories 2 and 3 animals are less of a risk as long as adequate training and supervision is in place and the individuality of each animal is assessed. For example, the walkthrough is a bit of lean as it fly across. Guidance on management regarding zoo analysis and zoo should also be regarded in terms of health and safety and should cover risks to both animals and humans. Activities should be assessed for any risks involved. For example, if any particular group has an increased risk of infection, 
control the risk of zoonosis, high standards of biosecurity and veterinary care should be maintained. Staff should be trained to be aware of signs of diseases to allow prompt diagnosis and treatment and quarantine areas should also be appropriate to stop diseases being transmitted to humans or other animals. While custody provides a key to a day experience, the health and safety of this experience is controlled by risk assessment and participants must sign health and safety forms. All participants must be aged 17 or older and be quite physically fit because of the nature and demands of the work. Visitors must have personal insurance to participate in this activity. In the Secretary of State Standards of what is due practice, it states that to reduce animals escaping, the perimeter boundary must be constructed and maintained so that it discourages any unauthorised entry as a need to confine animals in the zoo. Try across the road to the fence to check daily and maintain as well as keepers check animal enclosures before and after the zoo opens. In the Secretary of State Standards on what is zoo practice, it highlights that operators at the zoo need to assess the danger in the event of an animal escaping and consider the route which that animal might take to escape. A trained member of staff must be available at all times and be able to make decisions regarding euthanasia of an escaped animal by determining the level of risk to staff and visitors at the zoo. Emergency procedures must be known by members of staff so that they understand what should be done in case of an animal escaping. Direct contact between animals and the public is not advised unless the zoo operator is confident that such animals, when under control, are not likely to cause injury or spread disease. Decisions based on this should only be made after a suitable risk assessment has been carried out and brought to the attention of people involved. Plans should be in place to make sure that the public are safe during these direct contact situations and that experienced keepers are present to maintain control. At Tricross Zoo, Lavakeet Landing involves visitors being able to feed the Lavakeet from a container which would be held in their hands. This experience is controlled by having trained keepers in the enclosure supervising at all times. The Secretary of State Standards of Modern Zoo Practice highlights that animals kept in the zoo must be maintained at all times in their enclosures, or in the case of free run animals, within the perimeter of the zoo. Enclosures that animals are kept in must be constructed as prevent escape. To prevent unauthorised opening, gates and doors to enclosures should be securely locked. Gates and doors to enclosures must be at least as strong and as effective in containing the animals as the rest of the enclosure barriers. They should be designed and maintained to prevent animals from lifting them from their hinges or attacking the securing device. At Tricross Zoo, the keepers check the animals' enclosures before the opening of the zoo and after the closing to avoid such escape, as well as this, the fence and barriers at Tricross Zoo are checked every day to prevent escape and to stop unauthorised entrance. They also have staff on site as well as CCTV. Where the public are allowed entrance, gates and doors to that enclosure as well as standoff barriers should be designed, constructed and maintained so that they do not trap or otherwise injure visitors according to the Secretary of State standards and one is due practice. This is particularly true in the case of children or those with disabilities. Barriers and perimeter fences are constructed to stop animals getting out, but also to stop other animals and people from getting in. At Tricross Zoo, these are checked every day. Standoff barriers are a simple but effective method of increasing the proximity between animals and visitors. They increase the distance between the animal's enclosure perimeter and the zoo visitor. They are also effective to stop visitors from feeding animals which could potentially harm them. At Tricross Zoo, they have a double door system at the entrance and exit of the Lima Walk for real enclosure, which are made of steel and wood, preventing Lima escapes and insecurity. According to the Secretary of State Standards and Modern Zoo Practice, animals which can jump or climb should be kept in enclosures secure enough to prevent them from escaping and must be free from vegetation or other items which could aid escape. Tricross Zoo has a strict protocol which involves animal escape drills, which take place without anyone knowing. This means staff will know what to do if no more escapes and can prevent injury to themselves, other staff and visitors to the zoo. At Tricross Zoo, they have net above the snow leopard's enclosure to prevent escape, as snow leopards in situ prefer steep, rugged terrain with cliffs, ridges, gullies and slopes. Digging or burying animals must be constructed as to avoid escape underneath barriers.
Life was through could improve their education by travelling to schools and universities to highlight their aims and how they are working towards saving endangered animals. Children will have better understanding of zoos and conservation they do, hopefully inspire them to become more involved in the zoo world. They could highlight conservation goals more effectively around the zoo by having more notice boards scattered around the zoo as well as around the endangered animals enclosures. They could also do more talks in the zoo as they only do a handful at the moment. To improve health and safety around the zoo, Twice Class Zoo can make risk assessments more accessible to visitors when they are at the zoo. For example, in a bus route, they should be placed around the zoo. This will mean visitors are aware of risks and will know what to do in case of emergency. To improve security, regular patrols around the summit of fence should be conducted by keepers and members of staff, as at present checks when they're made in the morning and after closing. Records should also be kept to show checks have been made and issues made aware of.